Heroes come in all shapes, sizes and specialties, but there are some which stand above the rest. Which are these heroes which are just a little bit more heroic than the rest? Let's find out today as we count down the top 10 heroes in Total War Warhammer 3, right after I tell you about some fruity delicious energy faster than Vlad can beat some spearmen. And here we go. If you didn't know already, Holy Energy is the clean way to stay energised whether you're pulling a marathon campaign to conquer the entire map or campaigning to conquer an actual marathon. And this isn't a massive spike of anxiety folks, we're talking sustained, stable energy slowly released over time thanks to their patented new calf caffeine. I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine myself and hate when it makes me feel anxious and shaky. This stuff does not do that and I just feel focused with a little extra pep in my step. Plus their range of flavours are all free from sugar, taurine and all the other filler BS that traditional energy drinks are full of. Speaking of flavours, they have a whole bunch of them, but my favourite is Raspberry Raptor. But no matter what you choose, you get all natural flavours and colours. And did I mention that this is all for just 80 pence per serving, making it a fraction of the cost of canned energy drinks? So what are you waiting for? Hit Control A and attack that link in the description and use code Colonel5 at checkout for £5 off your first order, or just code Colonel for 10% off any order storewide until the end of time in the universe itself. You get some tasty energy at a great price, and I get a small kickback to keep the lights on, everybody wins. One last thank you to Holly for partnering with the channel, and let's see how Vlad is getting on. Flawless victory. Would expect nothing else from the daddy of the undead. Now, onto the list. Kicking off the list of the Gorble, these beastly heroes are incredibly tanky with high armor and HP. Now yes, it is a bit on the large side, but with a speed like this, it can dodge around enemy missiles, no problem, and close the gap in no time. Once it lands, it'll be devastating in melee, with very high weapon strength and melee stats that start out decent enough and get outright broken once they get some levels under their belt. They can easily take the fight to the front lines or backs as well as anything large, like carb or monsters that adversaries might bring. That bonus versus large makes them excellent monster hunters or duelists to take on mounted lords and heroes. There isn't really much they can't fight and come out on top. On your side, they're also rocking woodsmen, so despite their large size, can move through forests and no problem for sneak attacks when enemies least expect it. They also have a number of abilities, allowing them to gain more damage, charge bonus and attack the more kills they rack up, as well as boost the offensive stats of nearby allied troops. Overall, they're melee machines and work perfectly alongside the rest of the Beastmen roster. They start out strong and by the time you reach the late game, they're outright ridiculous with the amount of damage they can toss out and shrug off. The recently buffed Death Hags are up next, and we're really talking about their endgame Cauldron of Bloodform. Yes, this does make them into a slightly large target, but I think it's worth it. The toughness is pretty good with high armor and the speed isn't as bad as you'd think for something so cumbersome. We have both melee and range damage and all of its poison, which is as good as a lot more damage. Yes, losing the Madness of Cain made them less unique, which I would argue is a bad thing in the campaign, but it did make them strong since poison is simply one of the best effects in the game. The best used as support units getting involved in only as much melee as they can easily survive, whilst pumping buffs into nearby units. They have a wide range of them for nearby allies to increase all kinds of stats, whilst also debuffing nearby enemies, turning the tide of battle quickly in your favour. These are one of those heroes that will look like it's not really doing anything during combat, but the value they bring with all their buffs and abilities cannot be overstated. Add on the constant range damage all around them, spreading poison damage to all who come near, and they're an incredible value to bring into any army. They may not rack up the highest kill counts at the end of battles, but they'll have their hand in taking down more units than you can count in the background. Next up, we have the Cultist of Nurgle. Now, all the Cultists of Chaos are pretty good, and arguably, the Seench one is as good, if not better, than Nurgle. But two things, Nurgle's War Shrine effect is just a little bit better, in my opinion, and also, Seench is going to turn up later, so let the Stinky Green God have this one, since he doesn't really have much else going for him. So the War Shrine ability, as well as the usual leadership and melee defense, this also heals nearby allied units and this effect ramps up in intensity for each entity death on either side of battle. So you can focus down some enemy chaff or send in some of your own at the start of fights and all of a sudden you have a massive amount of passive healing coming from this thing affecting every unit nearby. Add on to this their ability to summon unclean ones at their full power and they quickly become some of the best support units in the entire game. Now, outside of this support, I admit they don't do much else. They have a lot of HP, but mid armor, very slow speed and not much in the way of melee stats despite their decent damage. Their best use is sitting in the back providing buffs or fighting against very weak chaff. However, that passive value is enough to bring them onto this list. Healing is one of the strongest abilities to have in the entire game, since the enemy has to deal far more damage to your units to take them out than normal, effectively making your units tankier than it has any right to be. Passively doing that to all nearby units in a chunky boy faction like Nurgle is a very strong combination indeed. Next up we have Master Engineers and we're coming back to a unit that can actually do some fighting of its own as well as just being a buff machine. These guys are very tough as is the Dwarven Standard, that means plenty of armour and some decent melee stats making them very hard to take down especially with a hitbox so small. Their weapon strength is pretty great too so melee isn't a bad use of their time but of course their real strength is from a range. They have a huge range, plenty of ammo and a massive chunk of armour piercing damage making them into great snipers to focus down key targets from afar. Yes, these shots do go in a straight line, so managing their line of sight is a little bit of a faff, but if you can manage that, they will deal tons of damage all battle long, especially against larger factions. As well as their own damage, they come with a range of abilities to improve allied ranged troops, including granting them extra ammo, which can come in incredibly useful for some later game ranged units, which tend to run out fast, such as the Flame Cannon. 
Keeping them at the back, doing nothing but spamming buffs and replenishing ammo is a great use of their time. Add on their excellent damage in melee and from a range, and they're a great addition to any army against any faction. The best part about these guys is the ease of use. You just set them at the back, spam their cooldowns every now and then, and maybe give them a priority target every now and then for some extra value. The range roster of the Dowie is one of the greatest in the game, and something to make that better will always be welcome in my armies. Next up, we have the Hag Witches. Since the recent Please Forgive Us update to Shadows of Change, these lovely ladies have gained a whole new law and are one of the strongest generic casters in the game. They have the choice of three great laws of magic as well as the law of death, including their unique law of the Hag. No matter what you choose, you've got a ton of utility, damage, and generally support for your army. As well as this magical power, they also have some pretty great stats. Now, the toughness isn't great with low armor and mid HP alongside very mediocre melee stats. However, they do come with blazing speed, magical and armor piercing damage, and some decent charge bonus. As well as this, they also come with some pretty nice range damage from a medium range and magical armor piercing damage there too. This makes them into great charging chariots that can push through enemy lines with ease, racking up plenty of kills in the process, all the while losing powerful shots for even more value, as well as casting spells to do just a little bit more. These are for sure one of the harder units to use on the list, mainly because leaving them in melee combat is pretty much a death sentence with their extremely low defense. As long as they stay on the move, they will get heaps of value, whether that's from their charging, shooting, or just spell casting. It might be a little bit hard to use, but if you use them right, they're one of the best. The Skink Priests are kind of similar to the Hag Witches, but with one pretty key difference. They're unbelievably tanky in their final form. Once on the Engine of the Gods Ancient Stegadon, their stat card becomes absolutely stacked. We're talking nearly 10,000 HP, huge armor, halfway decent melee stats, and tons of weapon strength, as well as constant short range poisonous missiles, and let's not forget, space lasers. This isn't even mentioning their magic, which mainly be the choice of two laws, but they're two pretty great choices, so I'm not complaining. These are so easy to use, since anything they do, they'll get value. Throw them into some melee, and even with their below average melee stats, they'll do alright on raw damage and mass alone. Sit them close to enemies and their missiles will chip away their HP constantly while spreading poison to everything they hit. Pop off the occasional spell for easy damage or support, and of course, call down the orbital strike whenever possible to evaporate whatever you set your sights on. I don't really have much else to say, they're just pretty great at everything, and the only downside is the chunk hitbox, but if you're down with the thickness, you're a pretty great choice. Now I had to sneak my vampire counts onto the list somehow, and the necromancers are just so much better than all the other vampire heroes that it kind of hurts my head a little. They're literally the exact same as the Lord version, but they have a little bit less leadership. They have all the same utility and healing as the Lord, but you can have as many of them as you want in each of your armies. So obviously, these aren't combat powerhouse heroes and are instead going to provide healing and spell support to your troops. However, the spell support and healing is some of the best in the game from one of the best laws of magic in the game, so no complaints here. Once they get on that unholy lodestone corpse cart, they're beacons of healing that cannot be stopped. So we've already said they have the lore of the vampires, and that means healing and resurrection, as well as buffs, debuffs, summons, and damage. What's not to love? Then you have passive healing from the corpse cart, as well as the master of the dead, so even when you're not casting spells, you're keeping units topped up just by them being there. As for actual combat, that's going to be a hard pass, but even without doing any of the actual dirty work themselves, they're doing plenty to contribute to victory. Vampiric healing is so damn strong, enemies can take out half unit but a couple of casts later, their riot's reign with fresh new entities ready to go. Constantly pumping that out is endlessly valuable and earns necromancers a place on this list, no question. Picking up the bronze medal, we have the Blood Reaper. Now for the complete opposite end of the spectrum, at least in its base form. These lads are all about attack with all that offense and no room for defense. Final form, you can go on a Juggernaut or a Blood Throne, and my choice will always be the Throne. The Juggernauts are good and all, but if you want one of those, get an Exalted Hero since they ride them so much better. Anyways, on their thrones, they're hardly slouches with very thick armor, relatively high speed, and a meaty bit of charge bonus. Their melee stats aren't the best, so charging around is for sure the best way to deal damage and keep them safe, but with flaming, magical, armor piercing, and anti-infantry attacks, they're going to hit hard no matter what you send them into, well, as long as it's infantry. As well as their own damage, they also come with a bunch of buffs from nearby allies, making them great for charging near your front lines, or alongside other cav for a bit of added punch. They also have self-healing whenever they're in melee, as well as increasing damage per kill they get for a nice ramp up as the battle goes on. Overall, they fit perfectly into the Khorne army as both a fighter and support machine, and even though they're a little bit hard to use right, when you do, they pull in tons of value. Now, the reason the Exalted Hero of Khorne didn't beat out the Blood Reaper is the Exalted Hero of Siege. All versions are strong, but Siege's is the newest and also the best by far. So, of course, we're talking endgame, and that means a Disc of Siege, making them unbearably fast as well as a tiny hitbox to off to a strong start. Then we get into the rest of their stats, and it's massive armor alongside the barrier for lots of tanking, very strong melee stats with tons of defense to keep them alive, fighting pretty much anything, excellent weapon strength with armor piercing, magical and bonus versus large, meaning they can take on basically anything and come out on top. And honestly, that's just about it. They're just really, really, really great fighters. It might seem like they're way higher than they should be, but honestly, they're just so cracked. That speed lets them get anywhere they want on the map, and the melee stats and damage mean they can fight practically anything they come up against and win with hardly any risks of themselves. The only downside is no mass, so if they get stuck in a bunch of enemies, they can't really get out, but uh, if you don't let them do that, they're pretty much unkillable. 
Doesn't matter if it's a pesky backlines troop, powerful frontlines, giant monsters, or even other lords and heroes, they can swoop in and take them out in record time and are undoubtedly going to see a nerf soon. But of course, there's just one thing and one faction that could possibly top that. Obviously, it had to be something from the Chaos Dwarves because the entire faction is stupidly overpowered, so why would their heroes be any different? The Demon Smith Sorcerers are literally just the Sorcerer Prophets, but have five less leadership and gain the Reforge ability, which arguably makes them better. They have the same spells, the same mounts, and pretty much the same stats, and the Lords are pretty OP, so no surprise the heroes also are. So once they get onto the Bale Taurus, their stats get pretty wacky. They're very tough, with decent armor and HP as well as great melee stats. They're also super fast, have extremely high armor piercing weapon strength, so can whoop anything in melee. They also have very respectable range damage with plenty of ammo and range, so can do great work from a distance. They also have their excellent choice of spell law, so can provide spell support from practically anywhere on the map, be that damage or massive stonking buffs to units. Then, as if that wasn't enough, you have Fire Breath and increased toughness the longer they spend in melee. There's just nothing they can't do, and none of it requires much skill from the player. Just send them in to fight, cast, shoot, or anything, they'll get it done. Get tons of value and probably not take that much damage in the process. Bunch of upsides and no downsides gets them the top spot in this list. And with that, it's over. Let me know if you'd make any changes in the comments down below. Like, subscribe, and if you want more, why am I three top 10s? Then check out this video here, the top 10 cavalry units in the game.